While Bowie reveled in a series of roles, our next king stuck firmly with the fans, becoming the ultimate crowd pleaser. As soon as Noddy opened his mouth, it was like, Jesus Christ. Let your head down. His voice was just incredible. I want you to clap your hands and snap your feet and get down and get with it. The other guys in the band, their parents used to say to him, you'll never get anywhere with that singer. All he does is shout. <laughs> Step forward, the king of the crowd and the leader of the pack, Noddy Holder. Like Mark Bolan, Neville Holder came from solid working-class roots, but this time from Walsall, the heart of the black country. His father was a window cleaner who often sang at local working men's clubs. The young Neville was soon doing the same. I believe for the first thing I ever sang on stage was Frankie Lane, I believe, which was the number one record in that era. And I was seven years old, and that was back in 1953. I'm that old. And as soon as I discovered Little Richard, I thought, this is for me, I want a bit of rock and roll. And it was downhill all the way then. By 1966, after playing with a string of bands, Noddy finally became lead singer of Midlands band The In Betweens, playing rock and roll and R&B covers. By 1969, they had a new name, Slade, and a large local fan base. But their manager, Chaz Chandler, had his eye on the charts. I said to Chaz, we've got to try and do something different because they just look like every other long-haired band that's around. So he said, well, what do you suggest? I said, oh, I don't know, maybe we should turn them all into skinheads. And he went, great idea. I said, no, no, no. He could see something was happening in the street. He chopped off our hair and lost all our girlfriends, you know. So it was a tough time, but he did get our name known. We needed to break through, you see. He said, I want you have to have an image that no one else has got. And at that time, nobody else had got it. But we weren't skinheads, really, and we didn't play their music because their music was reggae. And we were a rock band with a violinist. <laughs> Can you imagine this? The skinhead image might have got the band noticed, but the chart hit still didn't materialise. It was time for a new look and a new sound. It was 1971, and luckily for Slade, glam rock had arrived. Gradually, we turned it around. We still kept the, the skinhead sort of fashion look, but just colour, made it colourful, and it gradually that turned into what became really tagged as our, as our glam rock look, anyway. Like Bolan, Noddy went back to his rock and roll roots and gave it his own glam twist. Slade scored their first top 20 hit with Little Richard cover, Get Down and Get With It. The first time I heard Slade was on the Radio 1 Roadshow. I was actually late for school because I stayed at home listening to it at lunchtime and, and uh, it was get down and get with it, you know, Noddy screaming. I remember thinking at that time, when I can grow hair, I'm going to grow a pair of Noddy's big bugger grips like that. <laughs> um, and I did. <laughs> but that was a great thing about glam rock, you could have a laugh with it as well. A new generation were taking notice and having fun. If people had never seen us live in that time, they didn't really know the full picture of what Slade was all about. Audience participation, in atmosphere, the whole thing was just total chaos. Noddy's main skill was control of the audience. Everybody get their feet on the floor and everybody... Everybody! Everybody do what He knew when to get their hands up and he knew when to get them stamped in their feet. Noddy was basically controlling it. He was like a ringmaster. Come on, clap your hands, clap your feet, make some fucking noise! When we support them in 72, Susie and myself actually watched nearly every night and it was eyes glued on... Nod. I was yet to have my own success. 
So yeah, that was it was a nice little learning curve for me. And then when my time came, a very short time later, I was ready. The band really needed a self-penned glam anthem, so manager Chaz Chandler teamed Noddy up with violinist Jim Lee to write some new material. He come round my mum's house, uh, we had some cheese sandwiches and a cup of tea, and we sat down and we were messing about trying to come up with this elusive hit single that Chaz had told us to get. Within 20 minutes, we'd more or less got the, the foundation of the song. It was pretty much done in 20 minutes. And Chaz just thought it was fantastic. He says, I don't think you've only written your first hit, I think you've written your first number one. <laughs> Noddy discovered he had a real flair for writing stomping, raucous anthems which everyone could yell along to. That's right, that's right. I said my mama, we're all crazy but he was content to leave the outrageous get ups to his guitarist, Dave Hill. I used to never tell the others what I was going to wear for Top of the Pops because I always wanted to look better than anybody else or at least be noticed. And the thing is, when you've got a great single like Nod, to be noticed, you have to really be noticed. So what I used to do, I used to get the stuff made, go into the top of the Pops dressing room and hide in the toilet. You could hear the, uh, the hairspray going from the tin, shh, so you knew he was about to appear. And we'd you'd be sitting in the dressing room and say, come on, David, a reveal! And I came out and Chaz fell on the floor and Nod was laughing. And Chaz said, I think we've got another winner, man, you know. And I said, yeah, you write them, I'll sell them. He did not care what anybody thought about him or said about him. In fact, I used to walk through Woolworths with strange clothes on to see if people looked at me. And I knew if people looked at me, I was onto a winner. Dave fell off his platform boots and broke his leg. How can you fall off your boots? <laughs> it's very funny. I fell off my boots. <laughs> hey, 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 By now, it was 1973. Britain was in the grip of the three-day week. Power cuts were an everyday occurrence. We were in the grip of heavy strikes in England. The public were miserable. And this song was written in early part of that year and recorded in July in the heat of the summer. We knew, I think, pretty much we'd got a hit on our hands. We were the biggest thing selling singles-wise in that year of 73 anyway. We'd already had Come On, Feel The Noise going straight to number one first day of release. We'd had Squeeze Me, Please Me going straight first day release straight to number one. But little did we know that it would be going 30 odd years later. We had no idea that it would still be going strong. Oh, here it is. Merry Christmas. It cheered people up. They heard that record and it was optimistic. Look to the future now. Look to the future now, it's only just begun. And I think it hit people. Things have got to get better now. And I think that record at that time stood up for itself and it became an anthem all of its own. Merry Christmas, everybody, spent 25 weeks in the singles chart and is Noddy's most enduring anthem. And you ain't going to get rid of it no matter how hard you try. <laughs> By the end of 1973, Slade had had six number one hits the most successful British band since the Beatles. Although they stuck together after the glam bubble burst, by 1991, Noddy decided to call time on his singing career. Since then, he's established himself as an actor and broadcaster. Well, I'll give you a point if you can do as you walk, right? Baby, baby, baby! But Slade and Noddy are still saluted by today's rock and roll stars. And it's great now to look back on our career, not only as an act, but as writers, uh, and find the people are still covering them songs. We had Oasis cover it. The Japanese Cliff Richard covered it in Japanese. That's probably the weirdest version of it there ever was. I wished he was still with me, but his choice was to go and do other things. I'm still performing, 
I may be not performing on stage fronted a rock band, but I'm still performing in a, in a totally different way. If he ever wanted to, I'd always be there. But that's his choice. I feel the 